Welcome to the Sports Card Talk Show. To the Sports Card Talk the Show. Sports Card Talk Show with Kevin Anderson and Lauren Walker, the, the Skull, Skull Brothers. Brothers. Welcome to episode 45 of the Sports Card Talk Show. A uh, little Monday Mount Rushmore action. What do we got going on today? Uh, today we have Zach from Just Some Card 6 on Instagram yep. uh, jumping in to help us out with the Saints Mount Rushmore. So, uh, Looking forward to getting him on the line and talking some Saints. Yeah, I think it's going to be good, man. Should we uh, get him on the line? Yep. Ringling ding dong. <laughs> All right, we got Zach from uh, Just Some Cards 6 on Instagram here with us to help us out with the Saints Mount Rushmore. Uh, how's it going today? What's up, Zach? It's going good. Uh, nice early day today. Yeah, yeah. It's good, um, good to have you on. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, proud to represent my Saints whenever I can. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool. Now, uh, uh, before we get started, too, you served in the military. What branch did you serve in? I was in the army for three and a half years. Three and a half years. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Did you uh, serve overseas at all? No, I never got to deploy. My unit deployed like right before I actually got out, so I wasn't able to get. I didn't have enough time left on my contract. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. That you, uh, I personally, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to go, so I don't know if you would have wanted to go or not, but, uh, that's, uh, that's scary business for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. You don't know what's going to happen over there. Yeah. 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 Well, um, thank you for, uh, your service. And, yeah. Yeah. And, thanks um, so much. Yeah. yeah. No problem. Thank you guys for your support. Yeah. Um, so I think we should jump right into the to the Saints here. I'm curious to see what you came up with, and uh, I think we'll get started with the honorable mentions. All right, so my first honorable mention is uh, Bobby Hebert. He was uh, drafted to the Saints in 1983, and he was the first quarterback to take the Saints to the playoffs. He's from, he's from a small town in Louisiana. They call him the, uh, the Cajun Cannon. <laughs> yeah, I grew up – well, I didn't grow up watching him, but I grew up hearing my uncle talk about him all the time. My uncle loved him. Bobby A. Bear. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have much in the way of stats. Uh, he was a pretty average quarterback. He, but he took us to our first playoff berth. So that's why I got him on my rush for for honorable mentions. There you go. Uh, he, well, Bobby, Bobby was definitely uh, everything that encompasses being a New Orleans Saints. I think you know, but uh, you know, local kid. Uh, uh, just the, the way he talked, you know, <laughs> he definitely uh, Mr. New Orleans kind of to me. I, I, that's the way I feel. Yeah, sure. he has a uh, he has a, like a successful like Saints themed bar down in New Orleans now. It's pretty cool. Oh, neat. Yep. So, uh, there, there's not much I can say about Bobby A. Bear. I mean, he, like I said, playoff victory. Uh, you want me to move into my second one now? Sure. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have much to say on him. Uh, my second one's Tom Dempsey. He was a kicker for the Saints. He played back in the uh, the 70s. He was uh, he actually had half of a foot on his kicking foot. And uh, oh, wow. some of the co- – yeah, he had no toes on his kicking foot. And he had to have a, a special boot made. And a whole bunch of the coaches and also to give him an unfair advantage due to the style back then when they, kicked, they didn't kick like they kick now they did that straight legging kick uh-huh they said it gave him more surface area on the ball so it made it unfair and he actually held the uh the nfl record for longest kick or longest field goal attempts made for a long time until recently i can't recall who who broke it but uh he had a i want to say 73 yarder oh wow it was, it was a long one yeah, yeah. he's a I, I always liked watching kickers. Kickers are my favorite to watch. It's it's always amazed me just how I don't know how they can get that ball that far down there and just yeah and the placement and accuracy and yeah it's crazy and they got to do it all within just a couple seconds too. yeah <laughs> he's definitely a he's a Saints legend in my opinion. A lot of people down in New Orleans, I'd say a lot of people they they know who he is. They who he, if you go to like the Saints Hall of Fame and you go talk to people though. They'll talk for days about Tom Dempsey. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Play his whole career at the Saints, though. After, I want to say, two years after he kicked that kick, he left and went somewhere else. I can't remember where. But okay. Yeah, he left somewhere else. My uh, my next one on my honorable mentions is uh, Marcus Colston. 
he's the Saints all time leading receiver. Uh most touchdowns. Uh first place for most touchdowns in Saints history. He's a Saints Ring of Honor and uh Hall of Fame. He's been to the Pro Bowl multiple times. He had uh six thousand yard receiving seasons, which is the most for any Saint. He's just all around like he played for the Saints his entire career. He was a Saint his entire life. Mm-hmm. What what what's so cool about Marcus Colston is in the infancy of our fantasy football uh, league, Marcus Colston was originally a tight end slash wide receiver. So back in those days, you uh, it was really awesome to have him as your tight end, even though he was like playing wide receiver in like his rookie year. Yeah, and then they changed him to a full on wide receiver. But yeah, Marcus broke in the league at, uh, designated as a tight end. Which is, I didn't realize that. I actually yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that. That's what I'll always remember about Colston. Was like, <laughs> awesome. I got Colston on my team. You know? <laughs> yep. And this is back when uh, the only good tight ends were really like Tony Gonzalez and Shannon Sharp and Antonio Gates. Kind of popped up on the screen at about that time too. Yep. So getting Colston was uh, was a real real get. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> He's a solid person to have on any fantasy team, I think. I used to have him on all my fantasy teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's also pretty low. Uh, he went in seventh round, I believe. Out yeah. Of he, wasn't a, he wasn't a well-known guy. He's not like your your DeAndre Hopkins or one of those guys that came out of a big ACC or SEC team. He came out of Hofstra. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they had uh, – so that's my third one, Marcus Colston. My cool. fourth one's – uh, Sam Mills, who's part of the Dome Patrol, or, uh, late '90s, early uh, late '80s, early '90s, uh, linebacking core. Mm. The same play uh, a three-four under Jim Mora defense, and he was part of the Dome Patrol. Uh, it's the first set of linebackers ever to all four of them be put into the Pro Bowl in the same year. Uh, me, well, Kevin and I were actually talking about those Saints linebackers and. Yeah, that crew with uh, Swilling and Von Johnson and Ricky Jackson was absolutely amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's what, in my opinion, that's what got them to the playoffs in the early yeah 90s, late late eighties, early nineties. Was definitely their defense. Mm-hmm. They they were clicking on all cylinders with that three four defense they were running. Yeah, I never got to personally. I've watched throwback games and all, but I never got to obviously watch them play because I was born in ninety seven, so I came a little later. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. No, yeah, Sam Mills too is just a absolutely uh, stand up guy, or was a stand up guy, yeah. uh, for sure. Uh, just a uh, just a amazing player and and just a great person too. Yeah, I know. Um, I didn't even know until I moved to Charlotte that he played for the Panthers, and he's in the Panthers Ring of Honor. Yeah, yeah, I kind of was wondering where you would put him as far as like what list of Mount Rushmores and. He's probably going to end up on both, in my opinion. Yeah, I could definitely see him on the Panthers, Mount Rushmore, because even his his slogans embroidered in the back of their collars in the Panthers jerseys. Yeah, yeah. So, Sam Sam Mills is uh just one of the great guys that has played in the NFL for sure. Yeah. Um. So that's my four my four honorable mentions. I had uh, a Bear, Dempsey, Mills, Colston for yeah. my honorable mentions. My, I'm going to move on to my actual Rushmore now. Sounds okay. good. Awesome. My first from my Rushmore is Ricky Jackson, another member of the Dome Patrol. He's the first Saint to ever be inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. He was inducted, I believe, the 2010 class, if I'm not mistaken, 2010. Uh, he leads the team in uh, sacks in his career. He had 123. But uh, during his rookie season, they actually didn't record sacks in 82 as a uh, – uh, stat so they they say he has eight so they credit him with eight his rookie season but they don't put it in his official stat or his official sack totals oh sure yeah because back then apparently sacks weren't a weren't a recorded thing yeah any any players that played in the 60s and 70s the great guys are unofficial stats so i did not know yeah. when that actually started so 83 is when they started recording that's what i was reading that's what I was reading when I was reading up on him. Is eighty-two is their unofficial sack totals, but oh, okay. after that, uh, recorded. Oh, okay. So he leads. Uh, he leads the Saints in fumble recoveries, uh, sacks, all-around tackles, and uh, games played. And he was the first Saint inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. 
that's why I got him up on my Mount Rushmore. And in my opinion, he's a really like he's a stand up guy. He does a lot of stuff around the community. He does. He owns a whole bunch of businesses. He does a lot for the community around the New Orleans area. Oh, that's nice. good. Nice. Yeah, awesome. My my next one is uh, Deuce McAllister. This is the first this is the first player besides Colston on my list that I actually got to see play in my lifetime. I used to watch Deuce McAllister all the time, and I absolutely idolized him because <laughs> like loved how he had like that hard nose running style coming out of Ole Miss. He used to just run people over, like mm-hmm. get his helmet knocked off, and he just keep going, keep trying people over without a helmet on. <laughs> I think it's the coolest thing ever. Deuce He's was a-, a guy that I had a man cr- uh, a f- fantasy football man crush on. I loved having Deuce on my team. Yeah, so. he was a solid, solid player. Um. Let's see. He leads the Saints in all-time rushing yards. I believe rushing t- uh, rushing touchdowns as well. He's a member of the Saints Ring of Honor. Um, he came like a, he came out of uh, Ole Miss, so he's not too far off from New Orleans in terms of locality. Yep. Uh, he was on the Saints Super Bowl. They actually interesting fact about him. He w- uh, he left the team in two thousand eight, the year before the Saints went to the Super Bowl, and they actually brought him back for the. Uh, they signed him as a. Uh, free agent that year so they could bring him to the playoffs and hopefully get a Super Bowl win and a ring for him. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah. So he didn't play any games that year, but he uh, he got a ring and everything because he was on the team. Oh, that's cool. I know I know. Deuce is absolutely loved by the Saints Nation, so uh, I don't know if that's what you guys call or do you call it Houdat Nation? I don't know. <laughs> is that what it's called? Houdat Nation? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, so he's uh, now he does... Uh, sports color commentating on the radio down in New Orleans for a local radio, WWL TV. Oh, okay. nice! So he does he does that. He does a whole bunch of stuff stuff also with the community. Like uh, during Katrina, I know him, Breeze, and all those guys were really really uh, like with the rebuilding effort. They helped a lot. Oh, that's that cool. Thing. That's yeah, I, I I absolutely love Deuce. Totally love yeah. Deuce. Deuce is one of my favorites. He's a guy I. I wish I could get an autograph of him, but I can't find him anywhere around here. I'm going to have to order one online or something. Yeah. Uh, my next guy on my um, Mount Rushmore is Archie Manning, the father of Peyton and Eli Manning. <laughs> is that what he's <laughs> best known as? <laughs> <laughs> That's he's uh he was like the face of the Saints. Like I know uh, when I hear older people talking about the Saints, like they always talk about Archie Manning because the Saint, the Saints didn't have much going for him. Their offensive line was pretty bad. There's a saying in New Orleans that I hear a lot that nobody knows the ceiling of the dome better than Archie Manning because he was always getting laid down. Oh. <laughs> I, I have a feeling, I feel like I've heard that Archie Manning, if he hadn't played for the Saints and played for a, a, a good a good franchise during his career, he probably would have been, you know, remembered a lot better as a player. For what he had on his team, he definitely did. He did a good job for what he had on his team because the Saints were definitely not anywhere near a powerhouse back in those yeah. days. Yeah, before Jim Mora showed up, the Saints were called the Aints, you know, yep. and, and the fans like showed up with paper bags on their heads that said Aints on them and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, they, and Archie had to play with those teams, and Archie is a uh, absolute uh, legend in in Saints Saints uh, lore, you know. Yeah, he's he's uh he's up there with like Drew Brees and where people respect Saints players. He's him and Drew Brees are way up there. In yeah. Month. But uh, another thing, going back on the Aints, they actually used to uh like give try to give people Saints tickets back in those days for free, just so they could get attendance up and try to get like recognition for the team. And people would just be like, "No, I don't, I don't want." Them. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, man. Yeah. Because he played back in, he used to play back in Tulane Stadium before they made the Superdome. Mm, yeah. so he played. He played way back. Way I don't. Back. I don't know if you know this or not, but Archie finished his career wearing purple. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. He was backing up uh, Tommy Kramer in Minnesota like his last year or two. I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I know uh, there's like one Vikings card like uh, that that uh like 80 i want to say 85 tops maybe that archie and like to find it you got to spend a few bucks to get it you know yeah but i remember i i mean that was in my infancy of watching football and like my parents were like 
uh, Arch, you know, the guy backing up Tommy Kramer was really good, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, even the Vikings, uh, loved, loved him as the backup quarterback. So I didn't even, I never realized he played for the Vikings like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if he actually got on the field. I think he probably did. I mean, like I said, I was just a little little kid at that time, so I don't uh, remember watching him play. Don't remember the Vikings very well, but uh, in those when I was a little kid. But uh, yeah, yeah. But I do remember Archie being in a, in purple. There's football cards to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm gonna try to find an ad to my collection. Um, so my next, my next uh, Rushmore figure is Morton Anderson. He was the he was a Saints kicker for a good long while. He actually led the NFL in uh, total points scored by a player until I want to say last year, two years ago, he got surpassed. Yep. But uh, Vinatieri just uh, passed him, I think, last year, right? Yeah, Vinatieri has like I want to say nine more points yep. than him, like that. Not not many more, but he's passed him now. Yep. He was in the league for a really long time. He actually left the Saints. He went to the, our, our rivals, the Falcons. Started yeah. playing for the Falcons. He did a lot of things. Uh, he's another... A lot of these guys are like really in tune to the community. Like uh, Football and community has a lot to do with each other in New Orleans. Like A lot of the guys do community efforts. They all do stuff like that. He used to go out and like do kicking... Uh, like kicking camps for like local high schools, local middle schools, stuff like that. Oh, okay. So he's also been on the Hall of Fame ballot numerous, numerous times. But I don't think he'll ever get uh, put into the Hall of Fame just because kickers going into the Hall of Fame is not really a thing. He's not in the Hall of Fame, huh? I thought he was. No, he's been on the ballot, I want to say, almost every year for the past few years. He's been on the ballot, but he hasn't gotten voted in. Wow. He should He should be. He yeah. should be for sure. Because to my knowledge, there's not really any kickers in the Hall of Fame that only played kicker. Most of them that are in the Hall of Fame played some other uh, position as well as kicker. Hmm. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's why I think he's going to have a hard time getting in there. Especially with now the caliber of players going into the Hall of Fame. you got Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, those kind of guys coming in. Yeah. The, the, I, the NFL, because like we're celebrating NFL 100 this year, but next this coming summer is supposed to be the 100th. They're actually making two years out of this deal. Like, this is our 100th season. So next year, we're celebrating that there's been 100 seasons. And I think next summer, they're gonna. Uh, what I've heard is they're going to make a real push and push a lot of guys into the Hall of Fame that just keep on not getting in. So hopefully, guys like Morton Anderson get in. You know, hopefully. I think next summer will be the best shot for some guys that have not gotten in yet. Yeah, definitely. But Morton Anderson scored tons and tons of points for the Saints because, you know, the Saints are having problems on offense. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you got to get points where you can, right? Oh, for sure. You know what's funny is you bring up Morton uh, left for your uh, rivals, the uh, Falcons, Bobby Hebert. Uh, I know he did too. I feel it's like so I feel like there's a lot of, uh, like even like you said, Sam Mills left for one of your rivals, the Panthers. So. Yeah. You know, um, Joe Horn also left the Saints for the Falcons back in the day. Or oh, back yeah. In what? Six. Yep. I think he for the uh, Falcons. Yep. That's, yeah. That's crazy. It's funny how many. Uh, I also noticed a lot of Saints players, like you said, they they stay in the division. They just go to a rival. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Yep. I'm glad. I'm glad Morton Anderson or not Morton. I'm glad Mark Ingram didn't stay in the division. He's a tough dude to defend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yep. All right. So. uh my face of the franchise, I think it's pretty predictable who my face of the franchise for the Saints is. It's got to be Drew Brees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. It has to be. Yeah. He came in uh, 2006 after we had Aaron Brooks at quarterback. Wasn't the, wasn't the best thing. Right. <laughs> I, used to, I used to, I remember watching like clips of him playing. He'd throw an interception, just like smile and walk off the field. And I don't know. It just, it irked me. Oh, yep. But uh, Drew Brees. All time uh, passing yardage leader. He just broke 75,000 yards this year. That's crazy. Um, he has new, He has more uh, 5,000 yard passing seasons than anybody ever. I think he has five or six. His, his number of them. Yeah. 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 Uh, he has the top two spots for completion percentage in a single season or 
highest completion percentage in a season. Yep. I think he was at it, what, it was like 79%, 80%, something like something that. Something like that, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy high. Um, he's another one. He came to New Orleans. I've watched uh, lots of videos of him talking about him, them shopping him around and him looking for new teams. And he said uh, he came to New Orleans, and he just looked around, and he was like, I don't want to be here because he got here right after Katrina, and he just mm. saw all the flood water or all that stuff. And uh, he said, but when he came here, he, he loved it just because, like, the, the sense of family and, like, community – in the New Orleans area with uh, regards to, like, the Saints and LSU and all that stuff. Right. Just fell in love with the area. And he I, definitely... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Oh, all I was going to say is I've always loved Drew Brees. I, well, I always did love Drew Brees, and then you guys beat us in the Bounty Gate game. <laughs> yeah. and I, I've come around to liking him again, but that that was really sore. <laughs> so uh, that, that one hurt a lot. And, uh, but, yeah, D- Drew Brees is absolutely amazing player. I remember watching that game. I remember I was sitting there thinking, I was like, dang, Favre's going to need to throw an interception here. And he just threw that cross. He threw that cross the body pass, and I was like, "It's over right there." Yeah, yeah. Too many uh, Vikings made way too many mistakes in that game. You know, Adrian. You know, everyone blames Favre for the cross the cross the body pass, but you know, there was twelve men in the huddle. There was uh, Adrian Peterson fumbled the ball like three times in that game, and only yeah. I think he only lost one fumble. But we had like five, a couple other guys fumbled the ball. We had way too many turnovers, but it's always remembered as Brett Favre throwing across his body. <laughs> you know? Yep. I know we had that same problem. Uh, I want to say it was we, we were playing the 49ers in the NFC Championship game, and the Saints were just fumbling constantly. Like I remember fumble on the one yard line, fumble on the two yard line. Oh, just, man. And it ended up losing by, I want to say it was less than a touchdown. Oh. You know what probably brought me around to not uh, disliking the Saints so much was the Minnesota. Or the Minneapolis Miracle. <laughs> you know, a couple of years ago. <laughs> Marcus Williams missing that tackle. Yeah. Oh, dude. I felt so bad for that kid. You know, it was just... But at the same time, like, every time I hear that call, I actually get, like, tears streaming down my face. It's uh, it, was, it was one of those moments, one of those very rare moments that a Viking fan can enjoy, you know. <laughs> no. no, yeah, um... Well, a lot of people don't realize actually about Marcus Williams is uh, rookie the same year as Marshawn Lattimore. Lattimore got uh, defensive rookie of the year, but Marcus Williams' numbers were just a shot hair shy of uh, his numbers. Like he wasn't a bad he wasn't a bad defensive player at all. He just has that one play that he's remembered for. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Wait, that's he's tough. he's still starting for him. So I mean, he's yeah. still making plays. Yeah, he's definitely a solid. He's a solid starter for him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. But Breeze is, as the face of the franchise, mm-hmm. I think they stay there for, I'd say, a long, long time. Yeah. So I don't see him eclipsing Breeze's numbers. Oh, I don't. For, I don't know if anybody in the NFL might be surpassing yeah. his numbers for <laughs> years to come. I'll be old. I'm pretty sure by then. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> but, awesome. Uh, yeah, especially since like he took over for Aaron Brooks, like I was saying, we went from a losing team that like no one wanted to go to watch with uh, Hazlitt as our coach and Aaron Brooks as our quarterback to going to see uh, like we had Drew Brees, we had uh, Reggie Bush, who everyone was excited about coming out of USC. Yeah, mm-hmm. these guys that they actually played as a team for once. Mm-hmm. They still wins, and we went to Chicago and lost that NFC Championship game that year. Yeah. yeah, yep, I remember that. I was definitely a Saints fan. I hate Chicago Bears, so <laughs> so I was definitely pulling for Reggie Bush and the Saints. Uh, and yeah, that was totally awesome that you guys, uh, I mean, what what could have happened if uh, Nick Saban would have gotten Breeze in Miami, you know? Yeah, that's what I always thought. Like, what, what if Saban would have got Breeze in Miami? He, he might have never came back to college football. Yeah. Never, never know. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. Drew Brees is, uh, you know, and he's one of those short guys that no one that uh, uh, he 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 plays in the big he played in the Big Ten in Purdue. So maybe we knew about him a little bit better than than maybe the rest of the nation. But uh, you know, he went on to go play for San Diego, and I believe he played behind Doug Flutie there, maybe or uh, 
but Doug Flutie is also another short quarterback. So to see a short quarterback uh, succeed in the NFL and then go on and, I mean, set set all sorts of records on top of it all, just Drew Brees. Yeah, I, remember, I remember when he first came to the Saints, everyone was talking like, yeah, he's too short, he's not going to be any good. <laughs> right. Our team, team's built around a, a tall, semi-mobile quarterback, and we got Drew Brees now, and he's short, not really mobile. But he definitely made the best of the situation. I think he uh, he really appreciates that the Saints didn't pass up on him. Mm, right. You know, the Dolphins were like, nah, we don't want to take the risk. And then yeah. look, where, look where it paid off for the Saints. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, man, I think you did a, a great job on representing the Saints. Um, we appreciate you coming on and doing this. If you want to um, hang on the phone for just a second, we're going to – bring this episode to a close and uh then we'll just talk for a minute if you got a couple minutes yeah that's fine that's fine all right so that's going to bring episode 45 to a close saints mount rushmore with zach from just some card six on instagram thanks for joining us and uh skull brothers out